you have shown me your love through the judgment you see and you won my heart you won my heart now I can trade these ashes in for beauty and wear forgiveness like a crown coming to kiss the feet of mercy I lay every burden down at the foot of the cross at the foot of the cross where I am may come you have given me life through the death you fought for me and you won my heart yes you won my Ashes and for beauty, and wear forgiveness like a coming to kiss the feet of mercy. I lay every burden down at the foot of the cross. I trade these ashes and for beauty and wear forgiveness like a Coming to kiss the feet of mercy I lay every burden down at the foot of the cross
lay them burdens down and see what God can do <laughs> Hallelujah. I've not danced like that in a long time. Hallelujah. Jesus is a healer. Oh, praise the Lord. I love to dance with the Lord. I love to dance with the Lord. Matthew. Matthew. Oh, my word. We're in Matthew 4 tonight. I have the joy of the Lord on me. I'm so sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I am not sorry either. I am blessed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to try to do this. I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, Jesus. I felt the spirit when I was here. <laughs> it felt so good. <laughs> Matthew 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up by, of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Oh, man. Oh, the Bible says Jesus was tempted in every way that we are. Job was tempted as well. You see, the devil believes that under heavy temptation, we will not be able to withstand. Sorry. He believed that just like Adam and Eve fell, the temptation in the garden. Oh, thank you, Lord, for this lesson. That with the right temptation, we will fall off. He believed he would be able to tempt Job, but worse than that, the devil felt if he could make the temptation great enough that even Jesus would succumb to the temptation. Hebrews 4, verse 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the fill of our infirmity, but with in all points tempted life, as we are yet without sin. Jesus came to comfort sin and the devil. Lord, help me because I can't stop. I can't stop laughing. Praise the Lord. Uh, he faced temptation, and this is serious. And yet he did not fall to temptation. Temptation comes to all. And it is not sin until it is acted upon in a negative way for self-gain. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 2, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. <clears throat> Not hunger, but I'm thirsty. Oh. Uh, similarly, Moses was without food or drink on Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. In Deuteronomy 9, verse 9. Elijah also fasted that long. In First Kings 19, verse 8. What the devil was not aware of is that Jesus, or anyone else for that matter, is much stronger when they are fasting. <laughs> and praise him. Oh, Jesus, I needed to hear this. God miraculously feeds the inner man during a fast to God. I still get hungry. It's only when I fast to lose weight that I nearly start. Well, I'm not, I don't never fast to lose weight because I'm trying to gain weight. Take note of the 40, 40 here. Time of testing. With every test, if we depend on Jesus Christ our Lord, there is a way out. Verse 3 And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Uh, I have me a, uh, sorry about that. Notice in verse three that Jesus was a question. As he did Eve, if thou be the son of God, he was trying to plant a doubt in Jesus' mind. Thank you, Lord, for that confirmation. That he was not, that he was the Son of God. Verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. See, Jesus set an example for us with this answer. 
He said, it is written, our answer when the devil or our love tempts us to be, it is written. Later, Jesus would say, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. John 4, verse 32. His source of strength was obedience to the Father's will. And he would not even work a miracle to avoid personal suffering when such suffering was a part of God's purpose for him. We are instructed to eat the word of God. Our source of help in every situation is to have the word of God. So engraved in our inner being that we will be able to draw out our strength from the word. Our weapons are not physical, they are spiritual. It is important to prepare and be ready. Our day of combat is here. The church is being shaken. All who have not prepared will fall to the devil. There must be no compromise to the word of God. We must make it even more important to consume the word of God than to eat physical food. A more important source of sustenance than food. It nurtures our spiritual needs in a way that benefits us eternally, rather than merely providing temper, temporal relief from physical hunger. We cannot win battles with the devil in our own power and mind. We must fight the devil with the word of God, fight the devil and, and with the word of God and in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan used Psalms 91 verse 7 through 12, urging Jesus, cast thyself down. Again, Jesus replied the scripture, Deuteronomy 6 verse 16, that he was not to tempt God by such a presumptuous action. The very passage of scripture quoted by Satan usually goes on to promise God's ultimate victory over him. Now verse 5, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple. This was probably a roof with a, uh, what you call a portico uh, at the southeast corner of the temple complex where a massive retaining wall reached well from a level well above the temple mount. Um, deep into the Kidron Valley. According to the Jewish historian jo jo Josephus, this is a drop of nearly 450 feet. In verse 6 of Matthew 4, it says unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Well, so many times today, the enemy will come to us using passages from the scripture to make us believe that we are not of God. That happened to me today, praise the Lord. And I'm learning from that. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, is it Prentice? It just came on. I just danced with the Lord a while ago when I was playing my music. Mm. I haven't danced with the Lord in a long, long time. And I felt so much joy. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I'm still laughing, but I know this is serious. i got to keep, <laughs> stay serious, stay focused. Baby. Okay, so many times today the enemy will come to us using passages from the scripture to make us believe that we are not of God. The devil never changes. It is the same devil and the same tactics. Verse 7, Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus could have thrown himself headlong from the temple to show a sign or wonder of who he was. God calls people who have to have signs and wonders before they will believe a wicked and perverse generation. You see, God is not interested in convincing us through our mental capacity. He wants us to believe from our heart. Not every sign and wonder is from God. The devil is a counterfeiter. 
Matthew 24, verse 24 is printed in red because it is the words of Jesus himself. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, and so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. You see, we must know the word so well that we will be able to discern the truth from a lie. And speaking on that, I get these messages. I'm trying to hang on to my messenger for prayer requests. But I get these little chain letters. If you do such and such, God will bless you. If I hear from God that he's going to bless me, I believe it. I don't need no chain letter to tell me that God's going to bless me. And I don't need a chain letter to send to this one, that one, to bless the other one. All I need is the word of God. And he says in his word that he promises, but we have to have faith and we have to receive. So if I don't answer them chain letters, I don't forward them chain letters. It's not because I don't want to. It's because God has not led me to. Because they're not always a godly thing. He, 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 that's not the way he operates. Verse 8. Again, the devil takes him off into an exceeding high mountain. And shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Temptation. Verse 9, it says unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Give thee? Huh. He, it's not his to give. Verse 10, then said Jesus unto him, Get thee him, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship, worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. What Satan did not realize was that Jesus would take the earth back for mankind. He did not take it back by compromising with the devil. He took it back through the victory of the cross. Sometimes it is difficult to recognize the enemy. Jesus had no trouble recognizing him. Get thee him, Satan. We should take a lesson from this. Anything or anyone who compromises with the devil in sin has sold out the sin. We must not fellowship with those who continually practice sin. As Jesus did not stay in this place for the tempter, neither should we. Anything that is not pleasing God to God is sin. And the statement made by Jesus, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. We, see, we must not serve Satan or sin. We must walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Of course, we are not perfect. We will stumble and fall, but we must not be a servant of sin. The desire of our hearts must be to please God. Verse 11 tells it all. Verse 11 tells it all. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Angels came and ministered to him. Psalms 91, verse 11, 12. The verse Satan tried to twist was thus fulfilled in God's way and in God's perfect time. Okay, the second part of Matthew oh, 4. We'll go to the second part. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. At the fear of the Lord, where I am. That's not where I want to go on before. Okay, we're in verse 12. And when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Verse 13. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast and the borders of Zabalon and Neptune. When Jesus took ministry, he made it his home base, partly because of its prominence in Galilee. It has a tax, tax collector, a high government official, and a centurion with his soldiers. It became the home of Peter and Andrew and probably James and John. Jesus performed, wow, 
always working in my hand. Many miracles in Cap Cap Capernaum, including healings of the centurion servant, the double man's son, Peter's mother in law, the paralytic, and probably the raising of Jerry's daughter, also in Luke 4, verse 23. Later, Jesus condemned the people of Capernaum, for despite his many miracles, they still just believe. Verse 14 and 15. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esau, the prophet, saying, The land of Zabalon, the land of Nephilim, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of Gentile. Verse 16. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region of shadow death, light is sprung up. Even all the fantastic miracles that Jesus did here, was not enough to convince these people of who he was. A prophet is not acceptable in his or her, her own land. Many of the Gentiles believed, but their Jewish friends already had the law and felt they were not in need of a savior. Verse 17, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The message of John the Baptist is now clearly proclaimed by Jesus Christ. However, Jesus as the Messiah is not calling on his listeners to prepare for the coming of the kingdom, but rather announces that the kingdom is here. The kingdom blessings promised in Isaiah 35, verses 5 through 6 to be fulfilled in a future kingdom. It becomes the credentials of the king at his first coming. I will make you pictures of men. Excuse me. Let me back up just a minute. Yeah, I will make you pictures of men clearly indicates the nature of this ministry. They would receive special training and bring a man into the kingdom. Having left their nets, these disciples entered into a new relationship will never again be able to fully return to the occupation they once held so new. Verse 18. And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting the net into the sea, for they were fishers. Yet Peter's devotion was at times an impulsive one. Peter's faith in Christ command allowed him to walk on water, and then after he had walked, his disbelief caused him to sink. That we'll see in chapter 14, verse 28 through 31. Peter's sensitivity to God's witness prompted his great confession that Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God, only to be followed by words inspired by Satan. Verse 19 and 20. And he said unto him, them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of man. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. These verses tell us a lot about our Lord Jesus Christ while he walked on the earth. He spoke, and these two men obeyed. These men, by vocation, were fishermen. When the call came for the ministry, they did not hesitate. We could take a real lesson from these men. So many times, when the call comes to the ministry, we hesitate, excuse me, and try to finish the job at hand before we answer. These men dropped everything and followed Jesus. This call that Jesus made to these two men was not for salvation, but to work with him. They had to give up the comforts of home and even the living they had for an uncertain future of winning souls. This call brought them out of the worldly into the spiritual. These men were strong. It takes a lot of muscle to pull in fish nets full of fish. The name Andrew, I have a nephew named Andrew, means manly and Peter means rock. You can see by their names that these men were powerfully physical. Jesus was about to make strong spiritual man out of them. 
they would face more hardships as ministers of the word than they ever did as fishermen. These men were just ordinary men. They had no degree in ministry, only the call of God upon their lives. These two were to become part of the elite twelve that would go would through Jesus make a giant impact on the world. We will look at them again and again as we go through this study. For now it is enough to know that they would no longer fish for food, but for the souls of man. Verse 21. And going on from thence, he saw other two brothers, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, and John his brother in a ship with Zebedee, their father men in their nets, and he called them. Verse 22, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. The mother of James and John would ask Jesus to let her two sons sit on the right and left of Jesus in his kingdom. He did not grant her wish. He said it was not his to give. Verse 23, and Jesus went about all of Galilee teaching in their synagogue, in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And healing all matters of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Jesus was about the Father's business. He taught, he preached, he healed in their churches. And wherever people had needs, the three main aspects of Christ's public ministry. There was a number of little towns in Galilee. Many miracles were done in these cities. Jesus stated that if the miracles that were done in Capernaum had been done in Saddam, they would have repented and been saved. In Capernaum, they believed that Jesus was the carpenter's son, not the son of God. Verse 24, and his fame went throughout all Syria, and they, they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers disease and torment, and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them. Verse 25. Well, this could be way. Literally thousands were healed, freed from demon spirits, restored to sanity, and stopped shaking from the palsy. All these people had to do was to believe and just one touch from Jesus' hand restored them. You can easily see that his power were not limited. Verse 25, and there followed in great multitudes people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. The Decapolis was a confederation of 10 Hellenized cities south of Galilee and mostly east of Jordan. The leagues of cities was formed shortly after Pompey's invasion of Palestine. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for joining. Thank you, Lord, for helping me with the study. And um, if you do not know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you would like to, to have him into your life, say this prayer for me. Let me get to it. I got a prayer just for you. It's a very, very simple prayer. Very simple prayer. Repeat after me. Father God, please forgive me of all my sins and mistakes. And make me right before you. Right. And I confess that Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. By faith in your word, I receive salvation and eternal life. And thank you for saving me. From the day on, I have eternal life with you. If you said that prayer, please leave a comment so we can keep you in prayer.
And I thank you and God bless you. And the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you so easy. So easy. Jesus in love. Tell somebody Jesus loves them. God bless y'all. Good night.